Hello, friends and family from around the country. I welcome you to today's special Day of Remembrance Worship Service, hosted by the National Japanese American United Methodist Caucus. I hope that you're all doing well during this time of the COVID-19 pandemic. And we thought we would take advantage of this opportunity, since we're all worshiping virtually, to collaborate and to put together a special worship service commemorating Day of Remembrance. My name is Reverend Karen Yokota Love. I serve as the senior pastor at Blaine Memorial United Methodist Church in Seattle, Washington. And I'm also the National Japanese American United Methodist Caucus President. I welcome you. I welcome you. And today we are commemorating a significant date in our history. February 19th, 1942. President Franklin D. Roosevelt signed Executive Order 9066, which gave the U.S. Army the authority to remove civilians in military zones, which were established in the states of Washington, Oregon, and California during World War II. This led to the forced removal and incarceration of around 120,000 Americans of Japanese ancestry living on the West Coast. These people, including my ancestors, had to abandon their jobs, their homes, their automobiles, their lives, their extended families, and they were sent to one of 10 concentration camps scattered in desolate, remote regions around the United States. So every February, the Japanese American community commemorates Executive Order 9066, and it is a reminder of the impacts and the impact of the incarceration that it has had on our own families, on our own communities, and subsequently on our country. It's a reminder of not just the people that were incarcerated in the camps, but all of the generations that followed. This is an opportunity to educate others on the fragility of civil liberties, in times of crisis, and the importance of remaining vigilant in protecting the rights and freedoms for all. Today, I invite you to take this time to remember your loved ones or people that you know, friends, family, cousins, uncles, aunties, children, that were incarcerated. And I want you to honor their legacy. I invite you to take this time to worship with us as this is a very sacred time. You'll have the opportunity to see many of our clergy siblings who are serving historical Japanese American churches You'll have the opportunity to see laity, to hear special music, to hear a virtual choir that's been put together. You'll have the opportunity to hear the word and message come from retired Bishop Roy Sano. I invite you to embrace this time that we have together. 
I also have one quick announcement. I invite the clergy to attend our virtual National Japanese American United Methodist Caucus gathering, which will be on Friday, April 23rd, 2021 at 11 in the morning. This will be a time to check in with each other, to see how our churches are doing. This will be after Easter. And uh, we just want to know how you're doing during this pandemic and how things are going in your areas that you serve. So mark that date. More information will be forthcoming and we'll be emailing you soon. So take care and let us prepare for worship. Let us prepare our hearts and our minds and our souls. Amen. Let us join together in our call to worship. In a world of injustice and racism, we come to worship God who calls for compassion and justice. Experiences of the past are painful to retell. We come to listen, learn, and grow from these stories as we follow the ways of mercy and peace. We commit to lifting our hearts in conviction, committing our voices to learn from the past, amend our mistakes, and stop repeating history. Today, as we open in a prayer of remembrance and commitment on today's day of remembrance service, let us pray together. Oh God, we remember that time 80 years ago when our nation was gripped with wartime fears and uncertainty. Our Japanese American neighbors needed our help and protection, but instead experienced exile and imprisonment. We again feel fear and uncertainty rising around us in our time in this day and age. We often wonder if others are dangerous because they may look different or believe differently than we do. But then we remember that we have been here before. Loving God, give us the courage and compassion to understand, love, and embrace our neighbors. And our fear, our fear is intensified by hearing that the wartime exclusion and imprisonment of Japanese Americans is being used as precedent for potential registration, exclusion, imprisonment, or deportation, often for Muslim Americans or Mexican Americans or immigrants from around the world. But then we remember that we have been here before. Loving God, we know you expect us to be better. We know we can do better. Help us to fight our fears with faith and to build bridges instead of walls. Oh God, we remember the dangers of racism, wartime hysteria, and lack of political leadership. We seek to learn from our mistakes to be a stronger nation and to give dignity and honor to each person as Jesus would do. Oh, loving God, help us to be your hands in the world. Give us the courage to stand up, to speak out and protect the dignity and rights of all of your children. Help us learn to celebrate our differences rather than fear them. Help us learn to love the whole of your diverse creation. Oh, God of all creation, in this hour of worship. Help us to remember and learn from our past. Open our eyes and our hearts to see your present through your eyes. Open our hearts to welcome your transforming spirit so that our tomorrow can be all that you hope for. Amen.
I invite you to join me now in the responsive reading of Psalm 146. The song response for our responsive reading is set to the French carol melody found in our United Methodist hymnal, and it goes like this. For the night weeping may tarry, with the morning light comes joy. I invite you to sing it with me now. For the night weeping may tarry, with the morning light comes joy. Praise God. Praise God, O oh my soul. I will praise God as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God while I have being. Put not your trust in princes, in mortals in whom there is no help. Their breath departs, they return to the earth. On that very day, their plans perish. Happy are those whose help is in the God of Jacob whose hope is in the Holy One, their God, who made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, who keeps faith forever, who executes justice for the oppressed, who gives food to the hungry. For the night weeping may tarry, with the morning light comes joy. God sets the prisoners free. God opens the eyes of the blind. God lifts up those who are bowed down. God loves the righteous. God watches over the sojourners. And upholds the widows and the orphan. But God brings the way of the wicked to ruin. Our God will reign forever. Your God, O Zion, from generation to generation. Praise be to God. For the night weeping may tarry, with the morning light comes joy.
I want to bring greetings from the cabinet of the California Nevada Annual Conference, especially from Bishop Carcanio. Uh, my name is Shinji Goto, and it's wonderful to be here with all of you. It almost makes me wonder why we didn't do this until the pandemic started. Uh, I want to thank Brother Craig Yoshihara for initiating the idea for all of us to be together and for others to help organize this Day of Remembrance service. As the title, The Day of Remembrance, indicates, we are not going to forget. We cannot afford to forget what happened on February 19th, 1942, when the Executive Order 9066 was issued. Because if we do forget, the history will find a way to repeat itself. It always does. It always does. As we turn to prayer on this day, I invite you to close your eyes if you would and take a moment to remember the names of those who spent time in the internment camps. Then I invite you to take a moment to remember those who live in fear today, those whose freedom has been taken away. And this may be someone you read about on the news or this may be someone you know personally, or this may be you. God of mercy, God of love, we gather together on this day trusting that you are with us. You have spoken through the prophet Isaiah, fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Lord, as we trust in the comfort of your assurance, we lift up to you all of, your, all of our prayers for those whose freedom has been taken away because of their race, for those whose freedom has been taken away because of their nationality, for those whose freedom has been taken away because of their poverty, for those whose freedom has been taken away because of who they love. You have proven through generations time and again, despair or even death does not have the final word, but you are the final word. So strengthen us, restore us, inspire us to be your voice, to be your instrument of peace. In the name of your son, Jesus, we pray. Amen.
I'm Pastor Mary Ellen Yoshino, and I am honored to invite you to be a part of this service with your offerings, your gifts. How fitting that our offerings received through the Day of Remembrance Service will be given to the Yonsei Memory Project, a grassroots program initiated in our California Central Valley. The Yonsei Memory Project began just four years ago and it utilizes an arts-based inquiry to generate dialogue connecting the World War II incarceration of the Japanese American community with current civil liberty struggles. UNC Memory Project recently received a grant from California State Civil Liberties Public Education Program to fund their Living Memory Lab a project which seeks to awaken the archives of Japanese American history by creating cross-cultural and intergenerational experiences. The Yonsei Memory Project, begun by two Yonsei women, let us know they are grateful for our offering. They write that the project runs off of love, sweat, and community funds, which they say allows us to provide free community experiences and continue the memory work which seeks to honor ancestors and empower next generations. Let us pray together. Dearest Holy God, how we thank you for this opportunity to give, to give to your work now and to work that will empower the future May you, O oh God, bless each offering and each giver. We pray this in your name. Amen. The scripture reading for this day comes from Romans chapter 8, verses 35 through 39. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. May God bless the reading and hearing of the word. Amen. On the 2021 Day of Remembrance, we recall that 120,000 Japanese Americans were sent in 1942 to 10 concentration camps. Although the remembrances I share may be personal, many others in our midst can share similar stories. I hope congregations will record them for future generations. The words of the Apostle Paul summarize my experiences. When sin abounded, grace did much more abound. These memories of sin and grace lead me to conclude never again. Sin abounded against Japanese Americans after Japan attacked Pearl Harbor December 7, 1941. Hysteria and hatred erupted against us and turned us into the most accessible targets for retaliation. The first instance for my family occurred when a Japanese American couple was murdered on the farm next to ours. Because Japan invaded Philippines the same day as Pearl Harbor, it was rumored that Filipino workers took revenge on a man for his abusive labor practices. In nearby Holtville, a Filipino American was seriously injured in a drive-by shooting because he was too friendly with Japanese Americans. It was not safe to be Japanese American or a friend of theirs. Pearl Harbor also kicked into high gear the anti-Asian 
yellow peril press of the Hearst newspapers. A number of articles said we pose a serious domestic threat and suggested radical measures. Because members of the Farm Bureau in California were threatened by successful Japanese farmers, they wanted to send us away. Most forceful was a report by the military to President Roosevelt. General Lon John uh, DeWitt reported in words that defy logic, quote, the very fact that no sabotage has been uh, taken place to date is a disturbing and confirming indication that such action will take place, close quote. West Coast units of the American Civil Liberties Union call for reason. The churches were essentially silent, uh, except for the Reverend Alan Hunter, pastor of the Congregational Church in Hollywood, and Reverend Frank Heron Smith, superintendent of some 37 Japanese Methodist churches in six Western states. They both vigorously opposed the mass removal, removal of Japanese Americans from the Pacific coast, but ultimately to no avail. On February 19th, 1942, President Roosevelt issued executive order 9066 that sent us into 10 concentration camps removed from population centers. On the same day the ex of the executive uh, order, the FBI swept through our communities and took away my father and pastor along with thousands of other leaders in our communities, uh, very likely to avert any resistance They were imprisoned in Bismarck, North Dakota, World War II's Guantanamo Bay for Japanese, German, and Italian Americans. In dad's absence and because we were exposed out in the boonies, my mother moved us into town to live with a pastor's family next to the church in Brawley, California. One night we woke up to gunfire Vigilantes were shooting up our church. They claimed flashlight signals appeared in the church's tall windows, so they had to stop it. Send covert messages, fully visible in the church's, in the, in the, uh, church's window. Hysteria and hate made people gullible enough to believe preposterous lies. As we left for camp, each individual was limited to one suitcase of our belongings. Members stored valuables in the basement of our church. Arsonists, however, burned down our church, very likely after looters ransacked priceless possessions. I acknowledge that it may be very difficult for Asian Americans from other national ancestries to sympathize with what Japanese in America experienced for only a few years. They all suffered from Japan's invasions, followed by decades of repressive and exploitative colonialism. Historically, Japanese American congregations need to be modest and honest enough to acknowledge what ancestors of other Asian Americans suffered under Japanese imperialism. Where sin abounded, however, grace did much more abound. Without minimizing the evil and power of sin in vindictive retaliations, I can bear witness to the manifold grace of God mediated through individuals by their faith active in love. One incidence of grace happened on March, 1942. We were boarding buses in Brawley to leave for camp 
not knowing where we were going. After I took my seat, I looked down and noticed a white man and several women came to distribute snacks and to wish us well. I was only 11 years old, but that sight became a fond memory I held dearly. It contradicted the violence that threatened to de de devastate us. Long after that incident, my brother investigated the memory he too treasured. He discovered the man was a local Methodist pastor and the women were very likely members of the Women's Society of Christian Service. The pastor was moved the following year, no doubt, for being friendly with, quote, the enemy aliens. In camp, the most direct and sustained influence of God's grace came through my parents. Although they, although they lost so much, they were not bitter. A keen sense of God's presence sustained and guided them. In addition, prominent people came to visit us in camp to say we were not forgotten. Although President Roosevelt sent us to camp, his spouse, Eleanor Roosevelt, protested the incarceration in speeches and in national publications. News of her visit at nearby Gila Reservation Camp comforted and inspired uh, people in all the other camps. Also, Dr. Frank Heron Smith may have lost his attempt to prevent us uh, from going to camp, but once we were interned, he virtually lived on the road for his pastoral visits to individuals and families in the 10 camps and our fathers imprisoned in Bismarck, North Dakota. Dr. Smith's constant bus rides and train trips eventually wore him out. On one trip, he stopped late at night in Cheyenne, Wyoming. Because no rooms were available as it were in the inn, Dr. Smith slept on a lounge chair in the hotel lobby. The next morning, when the janitor arrived to clean up the bus terminal across the street from the hotel, he discovered Dr. Smith lying on the floor he had suffered a heart attack and a, or a stroke. After his recovery, Dr. Smith resumed his rigorous travels until the camps were closed. And then after the war, helped Japanese American Methodists rebuild their churches and congregations. Our churches became hostels for returning internees before their a job before they could find jobs and residences. I had a white woman as my teacher in camp who also mediated God's grace. She had gone to Japan as a Methodist missionary, but was directed back to the States when the war seemed imminent. Because she felt called by God to serve Japanese people, the missionary found a way to fulfill her calling uh, during the war. She obtained a job as a teacher and lived with us in the desert with this blistering summer heat, bitterly cold winters and suffocating dust storms occasionally. The day before my family and I left Poston for Pennsylvania, my teacher called me forward. She rose from her desk and said, let's say goodbye to Roy. He and his family are leaving for camp, leaving the camp. And then she turned and hugged me. I melted in her arms with tears streaming down my face. Uh, you can in imagine the taunting I experienced from classmates in the recess that followed. You let an old woman hug you and you cried. For years, I could only remember that my teacher humiliated me. But with the passing of more years, however, the witness of my teacher 
uh, selfless service and her loving care eventually registered. Let people around you do what they will. Let the larger society call you by hateful names. But I'm saying to you, you are a child of God. Thus, despite tyranny and sin and evil during World War II, experiencing God's grace through caring and courageous individuals saved me from self-destructive anger and hate that could have consumed me. Love in action, mediated by the grace of God that prepared me to respond to the God of grace. Many of you can tell similar transforming stories like mine, and I hope you do. In the summer of 1947, after we left Poston, Arizona, I attended a camp meeting at the historic Chester Heights camp meeting uh, grounds uh, near, uh, very close to our home in Media, Pennsylvania. After my pastor, Reverend uh, Chester Buzzard, preached, he invited us to accept, Jesus, uh, uh, to accept Jesus Christ as personal Savior and Lord. I walked far forward, knelt at a rickety altar, and broke down crying uncontrollably. A burden I had not noticed was lifted from me. You've heard it before, but I can say it actually happens. On the way home, I stepped off the bus and felt like I could run and run through the open field to our home. As Isaiah said, you shall run and not grow weary. The stars sparkle more brightly and the air. I still treasure the vivid memories of my conversion as a teenager. Seven decades later, I am still fathoming the inexhaustible riches of that transforming moment. These stories of sin and death, as well as God's grace during World War II lead me to ask, what shall we do with our memories? The first and most obvious today is to say never again. Not for ourselves particularly, but more for others because the hostility in our society against immigrants and foreigners in our midst. I say this because God reminded Israelites after they were liberated from the bondage in Egypt and lived in the promised land, quote, you shall love the stranger as you, for you were strangers in the land of Egypt. God also said, you shall not strip bare your vineyards, you shall leave what remains for the poor and the alien. Early Christians similarly said, extend hospitality to strangers. As we live in the land of promise of the modern world, God is calling us to protect the human and civil rights of foreigners who are threatened by abuse. And because we are not single issue Christians, we will also address the mounting homelessness and appalling income disparity, as well as loopholes in our healthcare system and domestic violence. We will do so in response to God's call to promote justice, practice kindness, and walk humbly with our God. Dear God, we are so resolved to do so. Amen. Children play be
As we close our service today, let's be mindful of the words that Bishop Sano shared of grace and love in action. There's so much that needs to be done in the world that we need to remember the lessons of the past, that we can go forth into the future and be the light of Christ to those who need us. I want to thank so many people who made today possible, to Bishop Sano for his wonderful message, to all the churches who participated in submitting portions of our worship service today, to TAC who helped put everything together, and to all of you who joined us so that we could become one community and remember this day together. May God bless you now and always. Amen. Amen.